Hey there my fellow designers and creatives, hope you're all doing well. This is Chetan here from Design Palette and I am back again today with another video. This is gonna be a phenomenal video because we're gonna be taking a look at the massive new features released for Adobe XD. This is the October update. I'm not sure how many of you have seen the updates and see how they work, but I'm making this video anyway because I make every other single update video. So without any further ado, let's get started. Guys, so before we get started, I quickly want to mention that I'm building my newsletter following. So I've got around 40 to 45 people subscribed and I will start sending out my weekly newsletter somewhere in the next month or probably the first week of December. So really appreciate it if you guys could subscribe to the newsletter to be the first link in the description. All right, anyway, so here I'm in Adobe XD and the first feature we're gonna be taking a look is voice prototyping. Now, nobody even knew that this was, could be a thing. Prototyping with your voice is insanely awesome. It's something that nobody could even imagine possible, but the guys over at Adobe XD have done it. Now, let me quickly show you how this works because it's pretty cool. So as you can see, I've got four artboards, which is blue, red, green, and blue again. And I'm gonna prototype between these artboards with just using my voice. And it's my voice. All right, so it's simple. I've got the artboard, which is set to one color. And I've got a button, which has the name of the color written on it. Pretty simple. So let's go into the prototyping section directly. And as you can see, I've already done some prototyping, which I will actually get rid of so we can start afresh. So we can get rid of this and uh, uh, we can get rid of this. All right, we should be good to go. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna come over here and on this artboard. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this artboard and drag in an interaction over here. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, let's uh, scroll down a little bit. The trigger is going to be voice. Now we have drag, which is a new one as well. I'm gonna show you that later in the video, but we're gonna select voice, all right? So the animation is triggered with a voice. So, and what is the command going to be? The command is going to be, can you please show me red, all right? Or let's say, can you please take me to red, all right? Pretty simple. Now the action is on auto animate. Now this also is a new addition, which I will be explaining further in the video. But for now, we're gonna select transition. All right, just for the sake of it, of keeping it simple. Now are you, are, you guys obviously know what transition is. So I'm gonna set the animation to dissolve and all the animations are same as the previous releases, nothing new in this. We've got the easing and the duration. Awesome. Okay, so now once we do that, I'm gonna select the artboard and I'm gonna create a uh, link for the artboard but I'm not gonna go drag it anywhere. I'm not gonna link it. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on it, which is kind of gonna interact with itself. So it's linking to itself. And the trigger is going to be time. Now, what does this mean? Now, this means that after a certain period of time, an action is going to take place. Now, if I set the delay of this to say five, which means an action is going to happen after five seconds is over. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it to zero because I want the trigger to activate immediately, if that makes sense. And as soon as zero seconds is over, which is basically immediately, I'm gonna go ahead and click on an action, and the action is going to be a speech playback, which means the computer or the system is going to say something to me. And I'm gonna say, welcome to red. Now let's quickly take a look at how this works and, we can in and then we can prototype everything else. So I'm gonna click on the desktop preview and it's gonna open this for me. Now to activate the voice command, you need to hold down the space bar on your keyboard and then speak. So let's do this, let's see if it works. And I've kept the volume to 100 so you guys can hear the computer giving this uh, the playback. All right, here it goes. Can you please take me to red? Welcome to red. All right, there you go. So there was a slight delay, but I guess that's something that can be fixed in the future update. But anyways, it works. Now let's go ahead and do a little bit more. So I'm gonna select this artboard. Uh, I'm actually gonna select this button and I'm gonna go and send it over to this. And the trigger is going to be voice. And then the command is going to be, can you please take me to green? 
Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're also gonna go ahead and quickly prototype this to itself, uh, which is gonna say time, zero seconds, speech playback, welcome to green. All right, perfect. And we're gonna select this green button. We're gonna transition this to the blue voice. Can you please take me to blue? All right, pretty cool. And then we're gonna have this trigger itself saying, welcome back to blue. So let's take a look at this whole thing and see how this works. All right, let's get started. Hold on spacebar. Can you please take me to red? Welcome to red. Can you please take me to green? Welcome to green. Can you please take me to blue? Welcome back to blue. Awesome, there you go. That was so cool and that's so interesting and very creative. It feels so lively, like as if the product is already alive. This is phenomenal feature. I really love it. All right, up next is plugins. Plugins can make your life and your workflow so much easier and better. It's such an awesome thing. So let's take a look. So all you have to do is go to your menu bar over here and you can get plugins, all right? So uh, I've installed every single plugin that's available. I will probably be making a few videos on explaining how each of these plugins work. But for now, I'm just gonna show you probably one or two of it. And uh, we're gonna go and choose discover plugins. So when you choose Discover Plugins, it's gonna show you all the plugins that are available. Now, of course, you can go ahead and update them in case there are any updates made by the developers. Now, these plugins have been developed by external third-party developers and designers. It's pretty simple to create plugins. All you need to know is JavaScript, and you should be able to create any kind of plugins, and these will be vetted by the developers at Adobe. So these are 100% perfectly proper to use without any bugs, without any problems, 100% awesome. All right, so all you have to do is just go ahead and click on install whichever you want. And there are tons of plugins over here. There are so many plugins that uh, that can be used. It's really phenomenal and insane. So today I'm just gonna show you one which is a dribble. Okay, so what I'm quickly gonna do is I'm gonna create an artboard and this is gonna be 1600 by 1200. Now these are supposed to be the dimensions that is um, acceptable by Dribbble itself. So you can't export any random document size, artboard size. And just quickly, we're gonna go ahead and grab some text and we're gonna call this Adobe XD hyphen Dribbble. All right, and we can just go ahead and quickly scale this just to show you how this works. We can center it and uh, done. So I'm gonna select this artboard and then I'm gonna go to plugins and then choose uh, share Dribbble all right, and it's gonna open up this dialog box and it's there. You can add in the title, add in the tags and the description and you can even hide it. And then you can quickly choose share to dribble and it's gonna automatically go and upload this on your dribble profile. All right guys, now this is the next feature and this is the feature that the entire world has been waiting for. It is micro interactions within Adobe XD. Now the way this works is super seamless. You don't need to use any keyframes. You don't need to spend hours together. You just have to have a couple of elements and it hardly takes a minute to get this working. So let me show you what I have done and then probably explain how to make it. So I'm gonna click and go to the prototype section and we're gonna go ahead and play desktop preview. So this is what we got. And what happens when I press on the plus icon? All right, there you go. We've got the sliders and the brightness text that comes in. And if I click on this, it goes back. Pretty awesome, I really like it. Now, let's see how this works. So I'm gonna get rid of all the interactions uh, so that we can start off fresh. All right, so the first thing you can see is I have, let's go to the design mode actually. As you can see, I have an image which is masked inside uh, a shape, all right? That is it. Now the way interactions work in Adobe XD is based on the layer names. So that's one thing you have to keep in mind. So for example, if I go to my layer properties over here, we can see we have this object and uh, you know, it's, it's called, uh, you know, whatever the name it is. And then we have a plus icon, which is over here. And then we have this kind of a rectangle box. As you can see, this is a rectangle box. All right, so this is the first stage. Now we're gonna design how it's gonna look when the animation is at the end. What happens when, how does it look when the animation is over? So over here, this is the second one. I have went, I've gone ahead and taken this, uh, let's close this up. I've taken the plus 
and I've rotated it by 45 degrees as you can see over here. So now it's gonna animate from zero degrees to 45 degrees and it's also going to move up. And then we've got a text which says the brightness and then we've got a slider over here. Now this two elements are not there on this. So let me show you what happens when two elements are not there on two artboards. So to demonstrate that, I'm just gonna go quickly, go ahead and click on this plus icon and go to the prototype. Let's drag to this and then we're gonna choose the trigger to tap. So an animation is gonna happen when I tap. The action is going to be auto animate. All right, I'm gonna click on that and uh, the easing we could just leave that to however it is. But actually we've got a couple more easings. We have got snap, we have got wind up and we've got bounce, all right? so. Each of these have their own different effects, but for now, snap, I'm gonna keep that as my uh, easing. All right, uh, so let's quickly take a look and see what happens. I'm gonna click on plus, and as you can see, this rectangle moves up, the image scales, because the image has been scaled in the second artboard, and these two elements just show up like that. But what if we want these elements to be animated into the frame? So let's quickly do that. But before, I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly prototype this back. And it's gonna be the tap trigger. It's gonna be anim auto animate. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select these two elements. Uh, let's go actually go to the design. Uh, let's actually go and group these, all right? Or you can right click and choose command group. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy that and paste it over here. Perfect. Now I'm gonna show you something. So if I come here to this artboard, as you can see this is artboard six, and if I go inside that artboard, you can see we've got the brightness and the group, which is basically the slider. And if I come here to this artboard, which is basically artboard five, all right, I've got the group as well as the brightness. Now, take a look at this. As I move these away outside the artboard, they are kind of hidden away even though none of the elements are touching because Adobe XT is recognizing these elements as elements that are being animated. And so it is considering a part of this artboard and not showing us even though it's outside the artboard. Now, uh, one thing I wanna do is we can go ahead and select this and we can reduce the opacity of this to zero so it fades in. The same thing we're gonna do to the brightness text as well. All right, now, now let's take a look at this. So let's go to desktop preview. Just uh, let's go to the prototype and desktop preview. Now, as you can see, I'm gonna press and there you go. It slides in, all right? And you can kind of see the opacity of it as well. So let's quickly, uh, I'm gonna do is to show you better, I'm gonna reduce the, set the duration to probably one second so you can see it in slow motion. And let's take a look. There you go. You can see it fading in and uh, that is pretty awesome. Another thing we can do is we can stick uh, this uh, rectangle and we can reduce the opacity of that to 80% or probably even 70%, uh, something like that. And we can go to the desktop preview and now quickly take a look at how this looks. There you go. That is so smooth and so awesome. Now this animation was kind of inspired by Charles Patterson who is a designer at Envision. So shout out to him. And as you can see, we're having this kind of a drag feature. That is gonna be our next feature. So let's take a look at that. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna delete this artboard and start uh, this from scratch. I'm gonna uh, copy that and paste it. So we have a version. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and select this element. I'm gonna ungroup this, or let's actually not ungroup it because it's gonna screw up the hierarchy. I'm gonna hold down control and click on this element. All right, there we go. Rectangle number four, it's gonna be rectangle number four here as well. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and move this right over to the beginning. And I'm gonna take this bar as well, which is rectangle number five, and I'm gonna set the width of this to zero. So it's completely over here. Actually, let me control Z that. I wanna do that on this artboard. Uh, all right, so hold down control and uh, select it, move it over, over here. And then we're gonna select this and we're gonna go ahead and set the width of this to zero. Now what happens when I set this to zero? the brightness of this reduces down to zero. Perfect, that makes complete sense. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna drag, oh sorry, let's go to the prototype mode. I'm gonna drag this over here and I'm gonna select the trigger to drag. What am I doing? I am dragging and an action is going to happen when I drag. And I'm gonna set the action to auto animate because I want the elements to auto animate themselves. Easing, we can keep that to none because I am controlling how much I'm dragging, when I'm dragging, and where I'm dragging. 
All right, so let's take a look at how this looks. So we click on, we, we, so we're gonna tap on the plus icon, which is gonna open up this, and now let's take a look. So as I drag this down, the brightness becomes zero, and if I drag it up, it becomes a hundred. So now this is pretty phenomenal and really awesome. And the thought process of designing something like this would have been really, really, really cool. So thanks Adobe for making this happen. Okay guys, so we've got three more features and we can quickly wrap up this video. The next one is called linked symbols. Let me quickly show you how this works. So here is an artboard with a button and some text. And uh, as you can see there, uh, it's got this green border which says that it is a symbol so uh, what that means is if i go to my assets panel you can see that symbol is over here so if you quickly want to make an object a symbol you can right click and then choose create symbol it's going to be over here uh, but since this is already a symbol it's not showing that option now let's take a situation where i want to copy this symbol and put it into another document all right so i got this new document which is untitled uh, okay i'm gonna just fit this to the screen all right, and uh, I'm gonna come back over here, copy this, and I'm gonna paste it. All right, now as you can see, um, it's pasted as a symbol, and you know, it's, we've, we've got this linked icon saying that this symbol is actually linked to this document, all right? Now let's say I go ahead and double click on this to change the color of this to probably blue, and I'm gonna change the text over here also, and I'm gonna call this blue, all right? And I'm gonna center this, all right, and done. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save it. As you can see, it says edited. Now if I go ahead and save this project, uh, all right, and if I come back over here, you can see we've got this kind of a notification. I have an option which says click to update. Now if I right click, I, do, I have two options. I can either make this a local symbol, which means that this symbol is going to be a part of this document itself, and any changes I make over here will not be affected here or I can go ahead and update that symbol to match it to this symbol. Now, if I hover over this icon, you can see on the left-hand side that it shows me a preview of how the uh, updated version looks like. So I can right-click and choose update and it's gonna update this for me. Now, the reason the text is not updated is because XD allows you to override the text in a symbol. So only the text is changes and everything else remains the same. Okay, so the next feature is about importing Illustrator files into Adobe XD. Till today, you could import sketch files, you could import Photoshop files, but now you can even open and import Illustrator files, which is pretty awesome. All right, so here is an Illustrator file, which is just a simple icon. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna choose open with, and I'm gonna choose Adobe XD CC. And as you can see, we've got this icon, and all these are editable layers, of course, so we can double click on it, manipulate the points, and you know, just uh, do whatever you want with it. So uh, awesome. Now coming to our last feature is exporting to After Effects. Now this is something that I have been wanting personally for a very long time because I love to do animations. If you guys haven't checked out my UI animation tutorials, uh, you should probably check them out. It'll be in the After Effects playlist anyways. Uh, but this is a simple project, a simple redesign of the TubeBuddy app that I did recently, I think two months ago. Uh, if you guys are interested, you can quickly check out the project on my portfolio. Uh, I did a simple case study on the, you know, redesigning the app and why I did certain things and how it made, how I make it look better and so on and so forth. Uh, just a simple thing if you guys are interested to check it out. And uh, yeah, anyway. so. For example, let's go ahead and take a look at any one of the uh, screens. All right, so we've got a screen over here. So we've got some drop shadow over here, uh, and then we've got some text, and then you know we've got the profile picture, icons, and you know so on and so forth. So I'm just gonna click on the artboard, come here, and go to export, and then choose After Effects. So here it is After Effects, and it's imported everything into After Effects. So even if you take a look at uh, this um, element rectangle, you can see it's imported as a PNG and not a shape layer. Oh, I think the reason is because that there is a drop shadow that has been added. I think this is something that they have to, uh, the XD team might probably have to work on to fix it. Uh, we need it to be imported as a shape layer itself. So anyway, that's pretty much it for this video guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this was a long and a phenomenal video though. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content like this. And if you have any questions or requests, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll definitely see you guys in my next video. So till then, take care and bye-bye.